Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 20th of March 2020. And yesterday, at midday GMT, we published a video entitled King Dollar, Who is Affected the Most and How? Now at that time, equity markets were generally down around 1%. Brent crude prices were $26.30 and WTI crude $22.89. The dollar index stood at 101.96 and gold prices had fallen to $14.72 and silver to $11.97. Now the purpose of that video was to highlight that of all the world's major currencies, the US dollar reigns supreme, or at least for now. And we quoted Mitul Kutecha, senior emerging market strategist at TD Securities in Singapore, who said, quote, The surge in the dollar is another blow to emerging markets. The demand for the dollar has outweighed any hit to the US currency from sharper, lower Fed rates. EM assets, emerging market assets, will continue to struggle as investors steer clear of relatively risky assets and maintain a bias for safe havens, unquote. We then went on to quote the various currencies and how they have fallen to record lows against the US dollar, not least of which being the euro, the Australian dollar and sterling. We also mentioned yesterday that the Philippines were expected to cut rates today, which they've done by half a percent, from 3.75 to 3.25. So we thought it appropriate to take stock now, which is just after 1500 GMT, 3 o'clock GMT, allowing us to see how Wall Street opens. Now, before we do that, it's worth mentioning that the three main indices, the Dow, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, closed yesterday up 173 for the Dow, down 25 for the S&P and up 117 for the Nasdaq. As we write this, the Dow today is currently up 220 on opening, the S&P is up 31 and the Nasdaq is up 126. At the same time, European stocks are firmer, with the Euro stocks 50 and DAX both being up more than 4%, and the FTSE 100 up a little over 1.25%. Asia Pacific markets overnight were mixed, but Hong Kong was strong, up over 5%. Now, oil prices yesterday rose after we published our video, but are down a little today, but still higher than our video yesterday. Reporting now that Brent crude is $28.43 and WTI crude is $24.49. However, there is no stopping the dollar, with the index up yet again at over 102 an hour or so ago. But, admittedly, again, it's a moving feast. It's fallen back a little right now at 101.82. So marginally down on midday yesterday, but it's been much higher this morning. So... Gold has in fact performed a little better today, being up over $1,500 an hour or so ago, but currently settling at $1,496. It's obviously going to hover around this $1,500 level. And silver too has done well today and currently stands at $12.67, having breached the $13 level earlier. Now, of course, by the time this video is published and appears on YouTube, no doubt these figures will have moved again. So, what are we to make of all of this? Well, tomorrow we shall be publishing our weekly update, which will be more comprehensive. But the economic data published yesterday and today has been more or less in line with expectations, with one major exception. Weekly jobless claims rose from 211,000 last week to 281,000 this week against an expected rise of 220,000. So there was an expectation in the rise of weekly jobless claims, but it's some 61,000 higher than what was expected. Now it's quite possible, not guaranteed, but quite possible, and we think likely, that this may be the harbinger of things to come and could certainly affect the unbroken multi-year record of continuing employment increases. There is absolutely no doubt markets are in turmoil and people are concerned. Bullion dealers, and we've all experienced this, have either run out of silver and gold to sell 
or asking what we deem ridiculous premiums, particularly for silver. Now, we fully accept that dealers have to make a profit. And one dealer told us in the last couple of days that all he was doing is passing on the premiums his supplier is charging him and adding just a small amount on top. Now, we fully accept, we don't deny there has been a surge in physical demand, particularly of silver, but of gold too. And many dealers are running out of stock. We spoke to another dealer yesterday who had an order for, tw well, for 12,000 ounces. Let's repeat that, 12,000 ounces. And he fulfilled it. He went to his supplier and he actually got that order filled. But it cost him spot plus four dollars, which is much larger than it would normally cost him. He then had to pass that on to the recipient don't know what profit he made but you can bet he's paid somewhere between 17 and 18 dollars an ounce which is in fairness at or around the sort of price we would have expected silver to be before this crisis occurred so where's the profit can you imagine with this current level of buying at these premium prices Let's assume silver rises to $20 an ounce in a few months' time. And those who've already bought will have their cupboards full and could be looking to sell. But to whom? Now, us stackers, if we've fallen for this situation, will be absolutely saturated with the stuff if we've got it. But who's going to buy it from us? And let's suppose you manage to get $20 for it, but you've paid 17 or 18 so you make two or three dollars an ounce all we can do is that like the client yesterday you bought many thousands of ounces because if you haven't was it really worth the rush and if you're not looking to make a quick turn then arguably is it not better just to wait until the market calms down a little which eventually it will now we know a number of you will disagree because you will have heard the pumpers who are telling you, grab what you can, where you can, regardless of premium, the price is now going to the moon. Well, let's wait and see if it does. If we're wrong, we'll be the first to say, okay, guys, we were wrong. I don't think we are. It, the prices may go up. But we remember, you see, the last rush to demand a few years ago. And whilst we do accept this is a little more extreme, once the panic was over, there was plenty of silver everywhere to go around and all he did was just manage to reach twenty dollars and seventy cents and this was back in august 2016. mad rush because the mints were running out of supply dealers were not willing to sell at the very low prices added margins price went up and hey ho twenty dollars seventy what was the price just a few months ago Seventeen dollars, seventeen and a half, eighteen dollars. Now, frankly, if you believe we are wrong, and we've admitted we could be, and if you are after a quick buck, because you feel that at the current level silver's a pretty sure bet, and you and you can perhaps invest in it for up to two years, but really looking to sell much sooner than that. Now we're reluctant to say this, but you're better off buying paper silver such as SLV or a company like Bullion Vault, with a long-term reputation, who are currently, as we speak, selling silver for $13.81 and are willing to buy it back for $12.78, just over a dollar spread. Far better than the 4 or 5 or $6 premiums you'll be paying for the physical. Now, yes, admittedly, you have the counterparty risk. But then, unless you collect it personally, you have a small degree of counterparty risk when you buy from a dealer who could go bust between receiving your money and delivering the silver. Unlikely, but possible. We have to admit that if sterling was not quite so weak against the dollar, we would have bought a few kilograms from Bullion Vault ourselves. In fact, we were, admittedly, going to press the button this morning 
perhaps for two kilograms and then wait a couple of days and buy another two and so on. But the price went up around 65 pence an ounce. <laughs> and so we've decided to wait. Perhaps we were a bit too mean or trying to be too clever. Not sure which, but... So, if you cannot get silver without paying huge premiums, our view is just wait and not panic. The worse the economic situation becomes, the lower the silver price will go vis-a-vis -vis industrial demand, but equally we accept the higher the price will go for it as a monetary metal. And then the issue is, will the demand for it as a monetary metal outstrip the actual loss in demand for it as an industrial metal? And if so, it still has to be significant to make a difference in the price. Now, if you also believe that the underlying paper price has to catch up with the physical price, which, to be fair, is a reasonable assumption to make. Because when you look at these markets, to a large degree, the two eventually do catch up one with the other. Now, some will argue that's never the case, but our viewing of this situation is they come pretty darn close. So if you believe today that the paper price is far too low compared to the physical price and that eventually it has to catch up with the physical price then the best way to make your profit is to buy it via the paper market or offshore via a reputable company like bullion vault now it's not 100 percent safe but then storing it in your home is not 100 percent safe and it has been going since 2005. And it's even won the Queen's Award for Enterprise, with 75,000 active customers in 175 countries, holding 38 tonnes of gold and 500 tonnes of silver, four clients in Switzerland, London, UK, USA, Canada and Singapore. We're also aware there are other companies which offer a similar service and suggest you do your own research and look for yourself and make that decision yourselves. But that said, and this is an important point to make, whilst we prefer to hold physical gold and silver ourselves, partly due to our collectible natures, because we like to look at these things, and also in time of crisis situation, we're also not afraid to have a small proportion of our holdings in paper contracts either especially when perceived bargains like sub-$13 or sub-$12 silver exists. Now, if you pay a $5 premium plus, then it does not become such a bargain, unless you genuinely believe that silver is going to $30, $40, $50, $100. $50. But if it does, you still have the advantage if you buy a paper contract. Now, we have enough gold and silver for security reasons. For that day where the banks shut and we then have to revert to physical exchange. But there is no guarantee that such an extreme situation will occur. You might think it now, but there's no guarantee that it will. So, it does make sense to paper trade for quick or relatively quick profits when opportunities exist. And please, do not tell me that none of the pumpers only trade physical personally. If they're willing to invest in mining shares, you can bet most are also paper trading gold and silver too. If only as a hedge against their physical holdings. Ask any major dealer and they will tell you they take out paper contracts as a hedge just in case their existing holdings should collapse in value. But we also suspect they do it for additional profitability too. So if it's good enough for them, and you're a pumper follower, and you believe everything they say, then do what they do as well. Get the physical, if you can, at reasonable prices. If you cannot get it at reasonable prices, and you still believe there is a higher price to go, then paper traded at least a proportion of your holdings. 
make your return, draw it back out. And even if you do that within a couple of weeks, maybe then the physical price might have gone down or you've made sufficient profit to actually pay those extra premiums and not worry about it. It's very rare we recommend paper trading. We have to say that I'm not totally comfortable. I'm certainly not recommending it. But that's what we are, have done in the past. Not to a big extent. But that's what we're considering doing now while this nonsense of huge premiums currently exist. And we, like you, are of the opinion that the silver price is too low at the current level. So why not make a profit from it? That's it for now. We'll have our weekly update tomorrow. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel and also our Richard and Greg channel in which Greg and I debate what's going on every other day. So there'll be a new video going up there either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. Also, we have spoken with our supplier for the Illuminati Silver 1 ounce for Silver members who've been with us for 12 or more months. And we are told that these will be shipped next week. So I will actually put a small video up tomorrow showing you what it looks like. We think you'll be impressed. And even if you cannot get any silver anywhere else, at least being a silver member for 12 months or more, you'll have a free silver one ounce. Until tomorrow. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.